BiPAP, non-invasive ventilation, physiology. In a normal alveoli, oxygen can get in and the carbon dioxide can get out. Normal ventilation perfusion can occur. The normal alveoli also have elastic fibres surrounding them, which are important for the recoiling of the lung tissue during expiration, which pushes the carbon dioxide out. Bronchitis is brought about by inflammatory changes causing mucociliary dysfunction and increased goblet cell secretions. So in the bronchioles, we see bronchoconstriction and mucose hypersecretion. This mucose hypersecretion leads to the productive cough in chronic bronchitis. The combination of bronchoconstriction and mucous hypersecretion leads to narrowing and wheezing, usually during expiration. This situation will mean that there is an element of alveolar hypoxia as the oxygen cannot get to the alveoli so easily. This then leads to a ventilation perfusion mismatch. This in turn leads to hypoxemia and hypercapnia. They can go on to develop a respiratory acidosis. We must remember that the respiratory system is comprised of two major components, as a gas exchange device and as a ventilatory pump powering this device. So if the gas exchange device fails, i.e. the walls of the alveoli or the blood circulation become compromised, then there is potential for a hypoxemia or a type 1 respiratory failure or a PaO2 of less than 8 kilopascals or 60 millimetres of mercury. If the ventilatory pump fails, i.e. getting the air in and out of the lungs becomes problematic, then there is potential for a hypercapnia or a type 2 respiratory failure or a PaCO2 greater than 6 kilopascals or 45 millimetres of mercury. If we refer to those patients with COPD, then we know that they have a certain amount of chronic lung disease. This results in them having either increased sputum, as in the case of the bronchitis sufferer, or less elastic lungs, as in the patient with emphysema. Either way, because of these issues, they will find it more difficult to exhale their carbon dioxide and will therefore begin to retain this waste product. The bronchitis patient will have increased mucus production, which will collect in the airways. This can provide a good medium for bacteria to grow and will also result in narrowed airways, leading to air trapping. The patient with emphysema, often caused by smoking, will have slightly different physiological issues. Smoking can cause the macrophages in the alveoli to secrete proteases and cytokines. This will increase the proliferation of neutrophils, which then release elastases. These will then break down the elastic tissue around the alveoli, leading to reduced elastic recoil, something the lung relies on during expiration. Those proteases will also break down the alveolar wall, so that the surface area is also reduced, further compromising the diffusion of oxygen. In addition to ventilation perfusion differences, lung hyperinflation is a major factor in the pathogenesis of hypercapnic respiratory failure, being associated with a flat diaphragm and thereby diminishing muscle efficiency and increasing energy consumption. This reduced muscle efficiency will, in the long term, result in the patient finding it increasingly difficult and tiring to take a breath in. As a result, there is a reduced gas exchange which increases the retention of carbon dioxide. When this kind of patient suffers a further setback by, for example, developing a chest infection, then this will make an already compromised lung even worse. The increased airway obstruction they might develop will potentially increase their risk of hypercapnia. The mechanical dysfunction of the lung will also lead to air trapping, promoting an end expiratory pressure and increased end expiratory volume, adding to the muscle problems and worsening the ventilation perfusion mismatch.